Hello beautiful people, how are you all doing today? I hope you are well. I am. Uh, it's it's time for some book chat. <laughs> I forgot what I was doing for a second. You're sitting in the book corner, Vivi. And today we're, it's another little dive back into the archives. Unusually, this is mostly fiction today and it's it's quite an eclectic selection you can see there's a theme through it there's a theme through it because it was following on from black history month and i'd asked friends for recommendations of slightly more modern authors because in terms of sort of black authors i've read they've tended to be sort of classics from 50s 60s 70s so i had a recommendation from a friend I was gifted one my sister sent one to me and my second cousin sent one to me and I'm delighted because otherwise I might not have picked these books up but oh boy I'm so glad I did in the end uh, let me see is there anything else I need to tell you before? no let's just dive straight on in to this just such a fab collection of books Anyway, so let's plough in because I've got a couple of absolute corkers to share with you. But the first one I'm going to start with, I'm starting with this, even though it's, I've just finished reading it a few days ago. I'm starting with it because it's, it's not a negative review, but it's a, it's a little bit down. And <laughs> I want us to cheer up before we say goodbye, which with the others we will. So the first one I read, is, not the first one, the first one I'm talking about today is Andrea Levy, um, Small Island. So I'm a bit late to the party, <laughs> 2004, I think this was published, won the Whitbread Novel of the Year, won the Orange Prize for Fiction. Now the Orange Prize, I'm forgetting all these things, I've been so long out of the book trade. I think the Orange Prize is always for female authors. I'm not sure. Anyway, what a book. Oh my goodness. Very briefly, in terms of what the book's about, there are four central characters. Well, there's a fifth one, but he's sort of silent. Four central characters. And the book goes backwards and forwards, backwards and forwards in time a little. Essentially, it's set in 1948 in London, so it's post-war London when the country is on its knees. It goes back. There are moments of the book that are set during the war, some of it in London, some in India. And there are moments that are the characters, their memories of their sort of early years in Jamaica. So we're talking, you know, sort of the 30s in Jamaica. It's, firstly, it took me ages to get into it. It's about 500 and something pages long, and it took me about 150 odd pages or so before I was really into it. So nearly a quarter of the way in before it really gripped me. So I think it is a bit of a slow burner, but I'm glad I stuck with it. I was right on the cusp of giving up with it. I just wasn't, I didn't know, I was, what is this about? Why am I reading this? What am I doing reading this book? I think partly because one of the main characters, actually all of them are, they're not the most likeable characters. And it's interesting that, isn't it? It's interesting that the author hasn't, kind of made them these lovable characters who we really adore and care about and want to see them do well. They, I wonder if part of that was the author's way of keeping us emotionally just one step back from it so that we could read it, or at least for me, I could read it with a slightly more objective sort of thoughts about it. I'm not sure. It might it might have been a really clever device by her. But yeah, I I didn't really care for the characters. I was struggling to get into it, nearly gave up, but I stuck with it. And actually then when I picked because I put it down for about three or four days, I just couldn't be bothered. Then I did pick it up again and ended up finishing it in two night sessions. 
two evening sessions and I sort of I loved it but it's a hard book it's a really hard book to read I don't mean because there's big words because <laughs> I know quite a lot of big words I mean the subject matter it's really hard there's all the war stuff and that's hard to read obviously but it's it's obviously it's about race it's about it's about that huge moment of change in Britain of the first the first of the Windrush generation it's basically what it's about these Jamaicans who these two Jamaicans who arrive in England full of hope it's their dream to come to England one of the guys has served in the you know in the in the RAF he served as he sees it for his mother country during the war and as long as he's in that blue uniform there's some respect but what happens afterwards when they come to the UK as civvies in 1948 and you know what it's not pretty I'm going to get him upset it's not pretty um I found it really upsetting it's a powerful book from that point of view. It, right to the end, there's, by the end, it, within the last 10 pages or so, there's a little upturn in hope. There's a little bit of hope at the end of the book. And I thought, by the end of it, I thought, thank God that Levy has done that for us because otherwise I would have thought, this is such a bleak read, such a depressing bleak read. But that little bit of hope at the end, ah, oh, brilliant. So I would say, you know what, I highly recommend it actually, despite that. I think it's a book that, I think everybody in the UK should read it, frankly. Um, it is really powerful, haunting. Even by the end, I still didn't particularly like any of the characters. Um, yeah, it, a difficult book, beautifully written. Um, It, I'm trying to figure how to say it. it was really 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 absorbing normally for a work of fiction we become absorbed because we're so invested in the characters and like I said I just wasn't really invested in the characters but the time and the themes I was utterly invested in so yeah I highly recommend it from that point of view but beware I it's not an easy read um, it is quite at, at times it was it was it just it upset me so much at times because I hate racism I don't understand it I just I just don't understand it I don't ha understand how people can be so vile to other people so right that's why I wanted to talk about that one first get it out of the way but you know what if you see a copy in a secondhand bookshop and you fancy a challenge I would say, especially for those of us in the UK and, you know, we live in a multicultural society in our cities, less so outside our cities. But I would say if you're if you live in London as well or any of our big cities, you know, Bristol as well, um, then, yeah, give it a read. Just it just helps us to have broad understanding of who we are today anyway there we go so on to the on to some fab ones again I'm probably late to the party with a lot of these things <clears throat> I think this was published in 2019 so I'm not that late and they're all fiction which <clears throat> I've talked about this in the past and it's made me kind of rethink it on this occasion that I stopped reading fiction it wasn't an active choice. I'm going to stop reading fiction now. But it sort of petered out maybe 10 or more years ago. I just felt that, you know, life's too short to be reading silly made up stories. I want to read facts. I want to read, you know, I want to learn. There's so much to learn. I need to read non-fiction. But actually, all three of these are fiction. That one I've just talked about, yeah, it's fiction. But wow in a way better than reading a history book, a dry, stuffy history book of that period. Brought it so much to life for me. Um, fantastic. So, 
yeah, I'm really enjoying fiction again. I think one of the things with fiction, it's hard to decide, isn't it, when one is looking at books in the bookshop, unless it's been personally recommended, is like, how do you choose? Whereas with non-fiction, it's easier to choose. I think things like, oh, um, like that I bought a while ago because of the title Salt on Your Tongue. And it's all about women and swimming and yeah, so women and swimming, <laughs> you know, it's a kind of a no-brainer. I'll give it a go, but I think fiction's a bit harder. Anyway, these are fiction, and I've loved them. So, the first one, or should I say the second, after Andrea Levy, is Where the Crawdads Sing. I loved it. Oh, my goodness, what a great book. Um, interestingly, it's another one that goes, it hops back and forwards in time. It's a, the structure is brilliant. I didn't get it at first. It took about 40 or 50 pages to get into it. Again, it's a cast of, well, the central character, the Marsh Girl. Uh, it's set in, is it South Carolina? No, sorry, North Carolina. <clears throat> it's the story of one girl, and then she becomes a woman. But it, but, so we, we jump back in time to when she's a little girl and and how this, again, it sounds pretty awful, but how this awful, calamitous start to her life begins and she's very much an outsider. So it's interesting. It's not, she's not black, but the town, the nearest town, so in a way it's sort of like a continuation of my Black History Month reading, accidental, but outside of the town is Black Town, where the black people have to live, because they're considered, but she lives even further out in the marsh. She's the lowest of the low. So it's a dreadful start, pretty depressing, but all the way I felt there was some kind of hope bubbling away, <clears throat> so I stuck with it. When we jump forward in time to 1969 is the most modern it gets to. Um, there's a murder in the town. So it becomes a bit of a murder mystery. It's like, how did the two, it, how did the two, how is it going to work? It works. So as the book goes on, though we start, I think, in 1952. But as the book goes on, we start to spend more and more time in 1969. The, the, there's the trial for the murder, so there's the whole courtroom, sorry, excuse me, courtroom scenes. I've never read courtroom scenes in a book. Love them on Law and Order, on the telly. I love it when they get into these big ethical debates. Um, so yeah, we, we have the courtroom drama, excuse me, brilliant. It was, <laughs> it was getting late one evening. I was like, I don't care if it goes past midnight. I have to wait up until after the verdict. I managed to, sorry. I managed to, um, I managed to get it read as far as the verdict just before midnight. And then it goes on after that little while. It sort of gives us an update much later on about all the different characters. Um, have a handkerchief. <laughs> I don't know why, but I think the, the tension, the tension is built brilliantly in the courtroom drama section of it. Um, the, the, the sort of inequality, the inequality between human beings, how can one human being be regarded as better than another simply because of colour or circumstance whatever so all that inequality I think that had been festering and bubbling away in me and that just upsets me so much um so yeah but it was fantastic and what I loved thank you thank you thank you Delia or Delia Owens Delia Delia thank you so much <laughs> to her as a writer because she gives us a really satisfying ending and all the loose ends are tied up. It's really, it's, it's that kind of, the ending of the book is like having a really lovely pudding after a gorgeous meal. It's the icing on the cake as it were. If I didn't have the pudding, you know, I'd be happy with the meal, 
but it just makes it. And it must have been about five pages before the end. And I was imagining an ending and I was thinking, I wonder if she's going to, I wonder if that's the thing I think is going to happen, is going to happen. I hope it does because that would be really neat. And yeah, it did. So I guessed the ending, but it didn't matter. I was really, really happy she gave us that ending because it's neat and I liked it. So, um, yeah, I'm going to say that... <sighs> It's not going to be my book of the year. That's still reserved for the Dick Prennicky, but it's very, very high up there. For a work of fiction, put it that way, absolutely loved it, rumped through it, would happily read it again, but life's too short. Um, I, my sister gave me this copy, so that I should have said, sorry, that my second cousin, thank you, Maggie, gave me that copy. These are all now going to go to my community library so someone else can enjoy them. Sis gave me that one. So I finished it late at night, but the next morning I got straight on the computer and typed out quite a long email to say how much I loved it. She got back to me and said, apparently there's a film has been made of it. And I said, well, I don't, I don't know that I want to watch the film of it because the, the, the pictures that Delia creates, though, or... Her words and then my mind created such strong images. I don't think I want those images to be spoiled. And such a contrast, say, with the Andrea Levy in that with the characters in this, especially the central character of the girl later, the woman, um, I just, I just adored her, adored her, adored her. And I, I just wanted the best for her all the time. I was so invested in her. That's, that's why I ended up crying. Yeah. Um, weirdly, this next one also brought a tear towards the end. That was really unexpected. It was more of a pricking and a, ooh, that thing in the throat, which I really wasn't expecting, but... Um, this is the last book, well there's one I've just started which I'll talk about very briefly, but otherwise, bear with me. Bernadine Avaristo, uh, Girl, Woman, Other, published in, it must have been 2019, won the Booker Prize. Um, so yeah, it's like, well it's, it's got to be a good one. Now she's written others, I think there's about three others she's written. But I chose to start with this because of the subject matter and also because it had won the booker. Very briefly, it's in four parts. Each part is divided into, has three characters in it. They're all women, the characters. And so within each part, the three the three characters, they have a connection somehow. It might be a mother-daughter connection. It might be a friend and her best friend. It might be, alas, it might be her teacher. It might be the teacher and her cleaner. And then we realise, oh, the, that woman's cleaner is actually the mother of one of the other characters in the book. That sounds really convoluted and complicated. It's not when you're reading it. It's very clear who all these different women are. And it's, it's a sort of a, a snippet in time of each of their lives. So it's, it's set now. Uh, it's all set in London, which I loved because it's the London I know, um, whether it be sort of, you know, the party scene, the work scene. The first character is a theatre writer and she's, she's finally on at the National Theatre. So there's a lot of theatre chat at the beginning, so I was immediately hooked. Yes, I know that world, love it. Um, so it's a very simple concept, in a way. Each of these women, they, they relate somehow, but it's a snippet about them. It's almost like a little biography, a day in the life of. But it's so much more than that. My goodness, this is a vast, vast book in in how the, the, the ranginess of the subject matter. So it's about black women. There are moments reading it when, you know, one simply forgets 
about the colour of this character, but then something will happen, it's like, ah, oh, yes, we're reminded. So, they're all black women, they're all different ages, some of the women are, um, are immigrants to the UK, some are UK born, and that, so that's a, I'm getting, it's just such huge subject matter to talk about. For example, um, that, you know, it's a, it's a book about history, it's about culture, it's about then, it's about now. In fact, it says it on the back, I think, it is future, it is past, it is fiction, it is history, it is a novel about who we are now. So we may have a, a young woman born in the UK, gets herself a great education, gets a great job. I don't want to give anything away really, but gets a great job, um, kind of a city type job, minds her P's and Q's, watches how she speaks, falls in love. The guy she falls in love with is white. He's upper middle class, quite posh. And her mum is Nigerian and gets upset to see that her daughter is becoming too English. She's like, you're Nigerian, you've changed what you're eating, you've changed the way you speak. So there's all these questions about assimilation, about, uh, I mean, like I said, it's, the subject area is huge, but about what, what culture and identity mean. Does one have to drop one's culture in order to fit in, in order to work, in order to simply exist? Some tough stuff. But also, it's this, it's almost a glorious celebration of women's sexuality and their sort of sexual urges and partners and, and sexuality after 50, sexuality at 20. It is fantastic. It goes all over the place in a way, but we always feel anchored in it somehow. Um, I'm being really inarticulate about it, aren't I? It's cheeky, it's naughty, it's shocking at times, it's painful and difficult at times, but it's blooming glorious i loved it so far i'm gonna say this year these are my joint my joint runners up to dick prenicate being my book of the year this one might even nudge dick prenicate off the off the top shelf highly highly ah i was gonna say highly highly recommend it the sunday times at the time said exuberant freewheeling triumphant a big, bold, sexy book that cracks open a world that needs to be known. I, you know, and that's the thing, I think, I've got loads of black friends, I've had black friends all, you know, over the years. I live, it, especially in my part of London, it's, um, it's a, I live in a really, really mixed area, but there's a huge black community where I live. Um, you can walk down my high street and you can either, if you want to buy your Nigerian food supplies, you can. If you want to buy your Jamaican patty, you can. It's a glorious riot of everything. Likewise, if you want to buy a Romanian loaf of bread or a Polish loaf of bread or a Turkish loaf of bread, you can. It's a f I love it. That's one of the reasons I love this area so much and want to stay because it is this, just this riot of culture. I love it. So I think one of the reasons I wanted to read and loved reading this is this is this is the town I know this is the community I know but now I know it so much better so much better loved it I feel a bit emotional but happy emotional because it yeah it's an absolute cracker do give it a read so right I've been yapping for ages again haven't I so um <clears throat> As I mentioned when I was reading The Dick, there's always a thread through my books. So this, this was an unintentional thread and it was, certainly was unintentional that it happened to be Black History Month. It's just the way the reading has gone. So I'm finishing off this little tranche of books because I think I need to, I, I really want to read some books about the sea next. I feel this need to have some, I, I think what it is is I've been very urban 
the reading has been very, very urban. I need to get back to nature, the countryside, the sea in particular. But I'm just finishing off with, yay, finally. So I was telling that story the other day about how this has been four years in, uh, in, in the making, me reading Michelle. Oh my goodness, I love it. I love her. I knew I was going to love it. I'm a huge fan of the Obamas. Honestly, I have a crush on both of them. I have a recurring dream. Oh my God. Yeah, I'm going to tell you. I have a recurring dream. It's been a recurring dream for the last, I don't know, five or six years. I have this recurring dream where the Obamas come to Britain and we make them joint prime ministers over here. So they start running Britain. Oh, God. Oh, Obamas, if you're listening. Obviously, Michelle watches me all the time. Please come over here and run the country. <laughs> anyway, so yeah, I've got a huge crush on both of them. A huge amount of respect. I knew I was going to love this, but oh my goodness. Um, it's about 400 pages long. Yesterday evening, I'm on page 110. I just started it <laughs> last night. You see where my bookmark is. I'm racing through it. Her writing is very succinct, very simple, to the point, but it's so full of warmth and love, love for place, love for people. So the section I've read at the moment is her, basically it's her childhood and right through her education to leaving Princeton and getting her first job. So I think she's about 25 now. Uh, so it's very much home school friends, university. And as I said, it's everything is very succinct and to the point, but I can see everything so clearly, it's so vivid. But the main thing, like I said, that comes through is just warmth and love and a sort of quiet dignity. And I think this is something that I always felt about her whenever I watched her speak this sense of grace and dignity despite all the muck that's being thrown, all the nastiness that's out there. She just had this, this quiet strength. It's beautiful, it's mesmerizing, I find. Um, and that is so comes through in her writing. It's lovely, absolutely wonderful, loving it. Last night, it was five to midnight, so you know on this new, you have to turn the light off by midnight. I, I was so tempted to go on. However, I didn't because the point I got to, and I squealed out, <laughs> I squealed out loud like a blooming teenager. The big up to last night is the first kiss with Barrack. <laughs> it was a long time coming. I sat in bed and I was going, yay, they kissed, they kissed. Anyway, yeah. Oh, silly giddy me. I can't wait to carry on with it tonight. Um, in bed with the Obamas. What could be better? So, like I said, I've only read a quarter of it. And uh, so far, I'm going to say, Again, I highly, highly recommend it. Actually, all the books I've read in this last tranche, um, there we go, all of them. I highly recommend all of them for very different reasons. That, that for a, sort of a quickie, fun fiction who done it, happy ending. Well, not happy ending as such, but uh, a nice for the reader ending, nice, a nicely tied up end reading. Bit of frippery, but great. Um, highly recommend that because, oh my goodness, it, it's true. It, it opens up a world that I'm part of, but I didn't know with that kind of depth. Wonderful. And I think the thing about it is that there's so much that I identified with because I'm a woman. But the whole extra layer on it about what it means to be a black woman, it just gave me so much more. Brilliant. So it's a romp and it's a fun read, but the subject matter is a is is much, much more is much huger than the crawdads. 
The Andrea Levy, I do recommend. I think, like I said, I think everyone in the UK should read it. I think it should be on every school syllabus. It's not an easy read. It's it's actually a really, really upsetting read at times. But like I said, glimmer of hope at the end. And then finally, yeah, absolutely highly recommend Becoming uh, by Michelle Obama. What a woman, what a fab woman. Such a great run of reading, thoroughly enjoyed. I don't know if enjoyed is the right um, term. Of all of them, I particularly enjoyed the Bernadine Evaristo, Girl, Woman, Other, and a friend of mine has recently finished and passed on to me, uh, what's it called, Soul Tourists. So I'm really looking forward to getting on with that. Um, gosh, that, that lot you just saw, that's about, that's almost a year and a half ago. So I've had time to forget Bernadine's writing style, so it'll be like reading her brand new again can't wait now the other thing just quickly before we say cheerio today is at the end of that clip i was saying i highly recommended all four for different reasons i'm going to just tweak that a little bit because at the end of that video at that point i hadn't finished reading becoming by michelle obama at that stage i think i'd read about a hundred pages about a quarter of the way through the book and i was absolutely loving it and then it went off the boil for me and I didn't actually finish the book in the end I think I read a further I don't know 70 hundred pages or so the reason I'd enjoyed the first hundred or so pages it was it's sort of her life from girlhood through adolescence into early womanhood I think like I said she's about 25 at the stage I'd read to and I loved it because it was sort of, you know, the dom domestic life, um, education, that life in South Chicago, is it South Chicago she was in? Uh, that sense of how that neighbourhood was beginning to change so that that wonderful neighbourhood she remembered but how it was changing. So it was very much, yes, it was very much her but it was also sort of social history, it was loving it. And then she met Barrack, and like I said in that clip, I was like, go on, kiss her, kiss her. <laughs> so they have their first snog, yay. But after that point, it got a little bit, it was too much into that sort of political world for me. And obviously American politics and British politics is quite different. So there was, there was stuff I wasn't really understanding about what's the... If Barrick is doing such and such, what's that? What's the implication of that in terms of his career trajectory? Um, it got it was a bit sort of like you know this committee and that committee and this group and that group and I, it just stopped engaging me. And that's fair enough, you know. It's um, once upon a time I had quite a political head, but these days. Yeah, it just doesn't grip me as it once used to. However, I do think, I still think it's worth if you pick a copy up from your local library, I still think it's worth it for the first third to a half of the book, <laughs> maybe. I did love that chunk. So there we are, that's another little um, dive into the archives. I'm not sure how much more there is in the archives to bring, but once the, the plan is that I'll fish them all out of my various different sofa chats over the years and just get them all onto this um, this book playlist now. And before we know it, it'll be time for another book chat, which might include this. Actually, it won't for a while. I've got I've got quite a stack of books to get through now. I suddenly have my book collection. It expanded at Christmas, and I've been reading, 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 and then suddenly it's just burst. <laughs> Again, I have enough books. Uh, yes, all right, lovelies. I will see you again really soon for something that's not about books. I don't know what it will be, so we'll find out when that day happens. Until then, look after yourselves. Happy reading. Sun's just trying to... Oops, that's my note. Sun's just trying to come out. Maybe we actually might be able to do some reading outdoors soon. That would be really nice. Anyway, until the next one, 
Cheerio.